But first, it's time for a couple of holy mackerel stories in today's news. One of the great Campaign 08 examples of common wisdom that was totally utterly, ridiculously wrong was the claim that Barack Obama had a problem with Jewish voters, that there was no way Jews would vote for Obama. He does have problems in the Jewish community. I do believe that Barack Obama has a problem in the Jewish community. He does have significant problems in South Florida with Jewish votes. It was so obvious. You didn't even need to argue for it. It was self-evident that, of course, the Jews would never turn out for a candidate like Obama the way they had for Democratic candidates in the past, like John Kerry, for example, who got a whopping 74% of the Jewish vote. Obama got 78% of the Jewish vote. (laughs) Dope! More common wisdom dies an embarrassing death. It was also common wisdom that the Democratic primary process would be over at the very latest by Super Tuesday in the first week of February. That did not happen either. And in fact, by the Jewish holiday of Passover last year, in mid-April, the campaigns were still in the thick of it, so much so that Jewish campaign staffers were not able to get home to spend Passover with their families. On the Obama campaign, that meant an ad hoc on the campaign trail Passover Seder in the basement of the Sheraton Hotel in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. At the end of the Seder, it's traditional to say next year in Jerusalem and last year in the basement of that hotel in Harrisburg, candidate Obama and his staffers at Seder added to the end of that next year in the White House. Well, now it's next year. And for the first time in American history, a sitting U.S. president is not only hosting a Passover Seder in the White House, he's also going to attend. It won't be tonight, for the first night of Passover. Reportedly, the White House wanted Jewish staffers and invitees to be able to have Seder with their families at home. The president and first lady will host a second night Seder tomorrow, which will probably lead to a new round of dumb common wisdom that Obama is secretly Jewish, or at least that he personally escaped from Egypt. The White House tonight accidentally copied a whole thread of internal White House emails about the Seder on the bottom of their emailed release of the president's daily schedule. Oops! Inadvertently revealing that some Jewish groups were upset that they were not invited to the event. Not exactly earth-shaking news, but definitely an embarrassing admission. Happy Passover. Finally, the real estate market's a little soft right now, for obvious reasons. But if you are looking to sell an otherwise unremarkable two-bedroom apartment in Washington, D.C., consider putting a headline on your ad like this one. Watergate apartment used in Nixon scandal. That's right. For the low, low price of 515,000 clams, you can own this two-bedroom, two-bath relic of presidential lawlessness. It's apartment 310 at Watergate West. It's supposedly where Watergate felon Fred LaRue doled out more than $300,000 in Nixon campaign funds to G. Gordon Liddy and Howard Hunt and other Watergate burglars and co-conspirators. The money was payment for them to keep silent. The Hush Fund Department is described on Craigslist as retaining its original historical condition. The website that is set up for the apartment and the eBay listing as well, note that if you buy the apartment, you also get a copy of the letter that Watergate bagman Fred LaRue sent to his landlady terminating his lease on that apartment. The letter of termination is on letterhead from Creep, the committee to re-elect the president. That letterhead alone balances out those hideous kitchen cabinets, don't you think?